Good morning, welcome back to another video, and today is another day of the Zero to Gold Cap Challenge. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so it happens we are currently in Darnassus. Now, what we're going to be doing for today's video is basically we're going to be doing our restocking. One of our commenters yesterday actually asked me if I could actually show them my restocking, like, way in which I restock. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that for today's video as we go day as we are daily We can now do stuff like this like pretty much all the time if we really wanted to So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a clean blank slate So we're gonna clear the queue we're going to also double check that TSM is updated So at the moment the last update for it uh, Coming forward is half past seven. So obviously it's pretty early in the morning, but I wake up insanely early, like four o'clock. So yeah. So that being the case, let's get into this. So what we're gonna be wanting to do is jumping into our TSM. We're gonna start off with a blank slate on our crafting queue, and we're gonna go over to our groups. We're gonna make sure that all of these are selected. That means the flask crafted, all of that stuff in all of the different groups that we created in our intermediate guide. We're going to now press the restock button for so restock selected groups and it will come up with everything set by our parameters. If you don't remember, we actually managed to set up our parameters in our crafting section of our groups. So this is our crafting operations, so 10% crafting, and we wanted a maximum restock quantity of five for BOE crafted gear. And that is setting our parameters for that. So when it comes to glyphs, it's five. When it comes to leatherworking crafted utilities, that would be like the coarse leather barding and all that jazz, that is 30. We want 30 of those on the auction house. So that is all determined and then taken into account. By pressing the restock button, it goes through all of the different ones that are profitable in all of our professions and then set will make a list on our crafting queue of all of the stuff that is profitable to make. At this moment in time, as we can see, we can spend 267,797 gold for an estimated profit of around about 155,000 gold. That's pretty damn good, and in all honesty, that's well over half for what all we're going to be doing. So what we're gonna be doing now is, once we've got our crafting queue, we're gonna go into gathering. So with gathering, we're going to select our character. So we're going to start off with giblet as we are currently on giblet. And we're gonna go into tailoring and enchanting. The cooking won't do anything unless we're picking with Corthana, who actually has the recipes for this. And what we'll do is we'll just select those in our professions and press tasks added to the task list. Basically, we just add them to the task list we we'll close down the cooldowns and the expirations. So what we're gonna be wanting to do is now jump over towards our tailoring, which is pretty much just buying from the auction house all of the additional things that we need. So what we're gonna do is we're going to jump over to the auction house and we, we have sold something for 4,800. That's Alliance Inc. That's pretty damn good. I like that. I'm pretty happy with that overall. So what we're going to be buying is we're going to be pressing scan all for all of the stuff that we want to buy and we'll buy the exact amount that we're looking for. So with fell cloth, we want 10 of those. So what we're going to do is buy out all of those and then we'll go over to frost weave cloth, which is 1,280 frost weave cloth. So we'll just get the max amount for that one and then hopefully that boosts up, we'll get another max of frost weave. So obviously crafting is gonna take us quite a long time, if you do say so myself. Now this one's more like it, it's a 41 silver for frost weave cloth, that's still pretty cheap, that's 50% of what it actually is, uh, market value wise. So what we're gonna be doing now is just gaining the remaining, which is 696 of the frost weave cloth. We don't want to buy any more than what we really need to. You, well, you can, but you don't have to. So what we're gonna do now is forget about the TSM little bug thing on the actual buying method. That just makes it not clear the actual thing, but if you double check on your task list, it should be fine. So now we're gonna go into ice, ice web spider silk. So there's always quite a lot of this on the auction house. 
and I want to buy eight of these for 15 gold. And obviously TS7 has done all the pricing for us for our profit, so we don't have to worry all that much. We want five Ethereal shards, and then all we have to do then is the bug thing has come back, and then infinite dust. And then for infinite dust, we want 384 of this. So 384 infinite dust, and then just buy all of those out. So the standard process for this is pretty damn simple. So we're going to just run over to our mailbox and then have a look. And we're just going to click on our buys for the day and all of that jazz. So that's pretty damn good. I'm pretty happy with that overall. And now it's just a, now it's just a thing of just opening up our professions. So Nestragosa, uh, my death knight seems to have some frostweave cloth. So what we're going to be wanting to do is we're going to want to jump over to her in a second because it will scan through all of your characters to see if they've got any of the mats to reduce the cost, obviously. And obviously my DK does have it because she's been doing Ice Crown Citadel. So that being the case, let's just buy our stuff from our vendor before we even bother going on with all of this. So I will now want to buy some Eternium thread and we're going to buy 60 of those, so 60 Eternium thread. And then the next thing that we need is heavy silken thread. Now, I can't actually get this from any of my uh, mounts, like my Tundra and my and my lovely Mighty Caravan Brutosaur. And so we're going to have to fly over. This is why I prefer this place here. It's the leatherworking and tailoring part in Darnassus. I know this place, like, I love... I, I do genuinely love Dionysus, it's lovely. Before Sylvanas did all that burning down and stuff for all that jazz. So we'll buy all that thread and that should craft that off. So all we gotta do is now switch to Nestragosa and Iranos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna log out. We're going to go over to Iranos and obviously you can see what realm I'm on now. So you guys don't have to ask me every five seconds what realm I'm on. Ar Argent Dawn. RP EU. So we'll just jump onto him and that should take us out of the raid because I'm pretty certain that, hmm, I don't know. I know way I did it this week on the warrior. So we, we shouldn't have that much of a problem when it comes to all of that jazz. So I like to do the professions in kind of like a simplistic way. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to make our way over towards da 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 and press our hearthstone for all of that, and then hearth back all over to our dude in Dalaran. Obviously I've set myself to the north from one because we're farming ICC at the moment with this character, so for obvious reasons it just makes more sense that way. Now, that being the case guys, we're going to be sending over this Frostweave cloth and all of that jazz. I must admit, these videos will probably be very long when it comes to crafting, like my crafting routine type thing, because I have left it for a few days. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump over to here, and we're just going to find our Frostweave Cloth. We only have three of that on our character. I should really make a, uh, a little thing. But um, other than that, if you are in a capital city, Insta logs you out, and then we'll just go over to Nestragosa and just log into her that way and then we'll do the exact same thing again but I'm pretty certain I haven't been on her for a little while so she may just take me straight back to Dalaran yes so that's made my life a little bit easier so we'll just get up on invincible because if you're on a death knight you definitely have to have invincible because it just makes sense and what we'll do now is just send over the other frostweave cloth towards giblet again which is 57 of those and then we're going to log back out. So now we've sourced all of our materials, it's time to doing the base crafts in order to create our extra crafts for that. So what do I want to do first? I probably will jump onto the, the next part of the actual thing, which is jump over to our mailbox and retrieve our actual sends. So obviously my Frostweave cloth, I want more Frostweave cloth. And then that should be enough for us. So we're gonna do our enchanting crafts first because that's like, 
doesn't take us a long, very long in order to do. So what we're gonna really want to do is just press the craft up button in our TSM crafting, and it will actually do the necessary crafts to get hold of our mysterious essence for our elemental force. And then we can then craft those weapons outright. So what we're gonna do now is we need enchanting Velium actually in our bags, um, because otherwise it won't do anything. And what we'll do now is we'll just go onto our Mitre Brant, uh, our Brutosaur, and then we'll just jump over and get ourselves some enchanted Velium, which be four, five. So we want five of those because we our crafting operation is only for five elemental force, and we have 15 mysterious essence right there. So jump back into our enchanting, and we'll just press enchanting elementium force. So obviously we're going to be doing that, and obviously the gold will go down as and when we're actually crafting this. And that is basically the premise of what I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our, our tailoring. So we've got our tailoring set up right here. And with this, with this button, it's okay when you're doing like enchants, but if you do frost bolts or frost weave, it only does it for one click for one item. So it's just create instead of create all. So what we'll do now is we'll just jump over to our tailoring and we'll just go into frost weave and then we just create our frost weave bolts. So we're just gonna create all because that's the maximum amount we actually want for our actual thing. And then we can craft all of the other additional things with our frost weave. So we've got 379 of this that we've got to actually craft out. So that's gonna take us quite a while in order to do. So that being the case, let's just cover a few little things right here. For the remaining of the actual day, I've been planning on just doing a couple of things in the future, which are some like, I'm planning on doing some uh, upgrades to all of that jazz. Uh, a new update on the other hand of Worth It will be coming out soon. Um, we just got to test it and all that jazz, but this one is definitely going to be worth everyone's time when we're actually using it. Uh, it's going to add a load of different new features and all of that jazz. So really chuffed for it. I just need to test it out a bit and then let everyone beta it once. Callan's finished his work on it and I've finished my work on it and then we combine it together to make worth it overall. So obviously this is going to be a bit of a long-winded video if um, we're doing a full crafting session for all of our stuff. Now I could always stop this and carry on a bit later on, which I probably will do because we probably want to see the end result when it goes further. So, so obviously crafting a load of frost weave cloth is going to take a long time in order to do for obvious reasons. Um, this is basically the standard daily crafting thing. You just go into your TSM and all you have to do is just go into your groups, press restock, and then just follow the list once you've pressed gathering for those different professions. You shouldn't really have a problem with doing this. Once you've actually set it up, so I have done a noob's guide to uh, TSM to actually set up your groups and posting operations, and then the intermediate guide, which is for your crafting. Uh, please note that it is 10% on the crafting and 110% on the posting for crafting that just to bear it in mind for that one if you get a little confused because i know that video can be a little bit confusing sometimes um aside from that you are more than welcome to jump on the discord and just and just import my my ones my actual setup that i'm using at the moment so you can bypass that entire thing but in this but aside from that you can always build upon that if you really wanted to now for obvious reasons, the restocking of this is just going to be crafting frost weave bags. And so once we've crafted these lovely bolts of frost weave, we're going to be going into our frost weave once again, and we're just going to be creating imbued frost weave bags, uh, imbued frost weave, and then we'll be making imbued frost weave. So, so for bags, so bag, and then we'll just go down to Northrend and what we're gonna be making is frost weave bags. So yeah, 
It will make anything at a profit on our TSM. That's my setup because I want to get profit regardless. Um, I'm really not overly fussed on the amount of profit. So obviously, Frostweed Bags is a 15 gold profit, but it's going to take us a bit of time. But the thing, the way I look at it is the majority of the time is literally press create all and just walk off and get yourself a cup of tea. Other than that, it's pretty dead simple in order to do your restocking. I can't really explain uh, that any any more clearer. You literally have to do it to like fully understand what you're actually doing. It happens to be our moon cloth, and that is why I park this character in Darnassus, because then I don't have to go very far in order to do it. And to be honest, no one is hardly ever in Darnassus anymore because they don't want to go back in time to when it was still around, so to speak. So what we're going to be doing is that we'll just run over to our Mooncloth. Obviously Frostweave's going to take us forever and a day in order to do. So what I'll do here is we'll jump into my tailoring and we'll just press create Mooncloth. And you have to jump into a moon well in order to do this and that is what I do. I just sit in, a, in the moon well where the portals are and yeah just create my moon cloth so yeah all that is 119 gold profit on top of that from just buying out fell cloth and it's a pretty easy way in order to make some gold because this sells relatively fast in the grand scheme of things as the majority of the time it's selling from near on double and yeah it's a uh, it's a brilliant way in order to just make a bit, few extra bit of bob of gold. I'm thinking about upping it on the amount of moon cloth that I actually create because it's actually doing so well. Um, aside from that, guys, that is basically my routine for restocking. So what I'll do now is we're going to probably stop this because it's going to take forever and a day in order to do and then I will jump on to doing all of the other little knits and bits going forward. I will finish this off and we will go over all of the stuff we've crafted tomorrow because it's going to take us about an hour to two hours uh, depending on how long I decide in order to actually do this. So the next thing that I do for the day of my daily routine for gold making after I've done my restocking is I go into my characters. So what we'll do is just log into my shaman. Then once we've actually logged into our shaman, he's already parked in a place he can insta log out, which can be anywhere where there's an innkeeper or all that jazz. Obviously guild chat has actually popped up with something. I will check that out in a second. But all I do is just bung into alchemy and then all I've got to do is go to materials that I can craft and we will just craft Pyrian bars for our vial of the sands and then log back out. And then every time I need those Pyrian bars, I can then just source them. So I've got three alchemists and then on a daily thing of just logging into that character and pressing Pyrian bars, I get three Pyrian bars for super, super cheap because Elementium bars and a volatile earth is like worth piss all. And then I get three items, well, three Pyrian bars, which are worth a load of gold. And I do that on my Warlock, my Shaman, and I also do that on Zathrash, my Rogue, who is also my Inscriber and fully-fledged Alchemist. So he's got all of the stuff, besides the other guys who have literally just got enough just to do the Pyrian bars and the Living Steel ones, depending on which one is profitable at the moment. But when it comes to profitability, it usually is the Pyrian bars over the Living Steel, because Living Steel can just be mass-produced like crazy, especially with everyone farming a load of Spirits of Harmony at the moment, and it's just not worth your time to even do Living Steel. You might as well just buy it off of the auction house. And we've actually found some lost mail on the floor in Dalaran. So I will take that, thank you very much. I can then sell that on the auction house once I've done the mini quest. Even though we already have the mailbox toy, we can always do it again to get the lost mail to post on the auction house. So what we'll do now is we will just jump into have materials, which is Perian bars. And then all I've got to do is just do my transmit once again. We've got 15 of those on our character. And overall, at this moment in time, we've got about uh, 45 Pyrian bars overall. And yeah, that's pretty damn good. Beside, uh, bes between the three alchemists, and then on Dalla GG, I've got 111. So yeah, 
choose pick your poison so to speak i've got quite a lot of pyrian bars and i'm not going to run out of vial of the sands anytime soon now aside from all of that the next thing i do for my daily gold routine is just by logging into our next character uh, but this one's going to be a little bit different so to speak so what with Zathrash, he's also my fully fledged alchemist and my inscriptor. Usually I would do my daily recrafts. So obviously I start with giblets, do my restocks on him, and don't really do much else. I just do my restocks and just leave it at that, unless I'm doing a load of dungeons or something along those lines. With Zathrash, however, I log into him and have a look at what he's actually been doing. Obviously we've got the Silas Sphere of Transmutation now, so pretty damn happy on that. I'm what, but the first thing I do is I will go into here and I will create my Pyrian bars quickly for the day so I don't forget. And then all I have to do is go into my daily crafts. So we'll close down these ones for the objectives and crafting restock still in process. And all I gotta do is just check off my Pyrian bar transmutes. Now I know that it's all done. Now with that, Zathrash will actually look for world quests so what I'll do now is I will back out and back out and then I'll just go over and have a look and see if there's any recipes popped up for our alchemist. So we can see that we need the previous rank for the contract of Order of, order of Embers and that is at rank 3 and that's going to get us 3 contracts of Order of Embers to get the rank 3. So we'll add that to our world quest tracker and we'll go do that in a second and the other one has not popped up I need the last flask when it comes up to doing our other things so I'm waiting on that but we go over to Zandalar it's basically the same thing check if there's any recipes there is not so there's only one recipe we need to look out for usually beforehand I will just do my crafting restocks to make sure they're done. This is Blinktron 7000. I will take that and open it up. And uh, we only got some post uh, coastal healing potions, but they min buy out of 10 gold and for literally picking up a quest that is uh, 30 gold. So pretty happy with that. Uh, the next thing that I will jump on and do is just jump onto our Brutosaur. So this can be anywhere in the world we can go into and we just want to get the order order of embers and I want to buy three of those. Usually I would craft these but it's just some sometimes it's just a hell of a lot cheaper just to buy them off the auction house. Depends on how much time you really want to invest in trying to save gold. Um, I really don't really worry all that much when it comes to actually doing a world quest because I know I'm going to get the return once I've done that world quest. So it's, you might as well just buy it off the auction house, help other gold makers out. So with that being said, I can always jump into, and all I have to do is just go over to Katie's stamp whistle. I can be anywhere in the world for this. And I will just press this because I'm too lazy to run over to the mailbox. Just open up his mailbox and just grab what he's bought from the mailbox and run away. Uh, she lasts for 10 minutes and that is done by doing the lost mail quest. So if you really want that, just go do it. It's worth your time, definitely. And then we're going to fly over to Aram Stand. I always set my Hearthstone towards either Mesomir or setting it to Boralus, depending on which character it is. Obviously, if I'm looking towards the flasks, so to speak, so if I want the flask, uh, if I want the flasks, like the greater flasks, for the last one is the the greater flask of currents if i want that it's going to be a najatar so i'm setting it to mesmere so i don't have to waste any time jumping through portals i can just press hearthstone and just immediately get it if you haven't noticed i actually have it have the, what i require for that world quest in my bags already that is two greater flasks of the currents so when that pops up i can instantly just give it in and get my last rank three i will be focusing on greater flasks at some point because there is a, uh, a nice little trick in order to get gold for these. Uh, it requires work, but <laughs> you know, it, it will actually provide you with a decent amount of gold overall, especially with the Silosphere transmutation proc. Now, 
if you don't have the silence fear, don't bother even trying to doing it. You're going to you might as well do that quest and get the silence fear first in order to maximize the amount of gold for your greater flasks. Now we're just making our way up to Aram Stand. Obviously, I've got ten ton of crap in this bag because for obvious reasons I like to keep loads of crap pretty much in my bag on this character. I know some people's bags are like super super messy but um, I like to have completely empty bags like nearly all the time. So we've jumped over and we're in Aram stand so we'll just what we'll do is we'll just mount up on our Rosashi Raptor and we'll just make our way over towards the person of note and then all we have to do for this is just give in those contracts that we bought for like a hundred, about 300 gold, a little bit upwards of 300 gold. And now we've got the recipe and then all we've got to do is now just learn the ranks. Obviously last year, if you haven't have known, I didn't actually bother with any of my characters because the zero to gold cap challenge was only set for one character. So I didn't bother with any reputation for all my others. So I've got to play a little bit of catch up. I'm not really overly that fussed by that, but now that is the World Quest recipe hunts over, and now it is literally the last part of my gold farming for the day is literally logging out. So if you press this, like just log out anywhere, it does has the timer. But if I run into an innkeeper, I can log out pretty much instantaneously. So what I can do is I will log out. And other than that, all I have to do is just run over to the innkeeper. And if I don't want to, if I want to save time on the actual thing, I run over to the innkeeper, press log out, and I instantly log out instead of 20 seconds to log out overall. Now, aside from that, the last thing that I do on the daily with the crafting stuff, so obviously this will be the last thing before I finish up all of the crafting on all of the characters. You have to bear in mind that I'm doing the crafting restocks for all of my professions. Uh, we already went over how we restocked at the beginning of this video. So now this is what happens once we're finishing up. So basically I go into all characters and just do all of my profession crafts. And the next thing that I do is just do my recipe hunts. So there are no emissaries up for me today for some reason. Uh, now there is. Don't know why that is. Just didn't seem to want to show up. So. What we've got at the moment is the wave blade and a Cohen. So I definitely want that because that's the rep that I need. So what we'll do is we will select the soul binders. We'll just click pretty much all of these actually. And we will now do our world quests. Now for obvious reasons, I don't have flying. I'm not gonna try and say that I do or anything of that lines. And it's basically just doing my questing at the moment because our objectives are to get the Silas crafted orb. We can check that off now. Now I just need to get BFA flying and then follow the rest of them down overall in order to increase our gold. Because if I don't have flying, it's pointless me using my, utilizing my mining and my herbalism in Najatar and all of the other places in order to make our greater flasks, which we can now do at a greater rate to make a lot more gold overall. At this moment in time, we're currently doing a crafting restock every single day. Uh, I have left it for a few days because of that thing and I just got a little bit uh, burnt, <laughs> so to speak, on all that jazz. So I was like, uh, can't be bothered. But um, alongside all of that, what you should really do on the daily to keep up to date with it, so you don't have a massive list like what I do, you'll only have a few things is to just make sure that you just do the daily craft every day. It makes your life a hell of a lot easier. Um, aside from all of that, there are other ways in which I do go about gold, but they're usually one-time things. This is basically my daily setup. It's just doing my crafting, doing my world quests for recipe hunting, and then just working on reputations. And that's basically a standard gold making day for myself. Um, sometimes I do throw in a farm here and there in the mix, but they're not always consistent. Um, the main consistent things is my daily crafting and then restocking modules, which then I go about doing all of that jazz. Now, aside from all of that, that is basically what I have to say for the day.
That's my daily gold routine at this moment in time. I am thinking about jumping into raw gold because I found, well, I didn't find a few, but um, I've done some research and, well, found a few online that people have already covered. And they are, and obviously me being very, very skeptical, I've tested them out and they are actually pretty damn good. So I'm thinking about adding those into my daily gold routine, such like High Mall, which takes 30 minutes to run it on all difficulties. And it basically gives you about 10,000 gold, raw gold per character for, for the week. That's, uh, that's pretty damn good. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much my daily gold routine. Have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.